All right, today we're gonna dive straight into kind of the trend of <clears throat> this time of year. It's gonna be forward facing sonar. Y'all have heard enough about it. We're not gonna argue if we should use it or should not use it or the settings or anything like that. We're gonna go through the baits. If I'm going scoping, if I'm going sniping, what are the baits I'm gonna have laying on the front deck? A lot of them you'll be able to guess. Um, probably all of them. If y'all have done it very much, you'll be able to guess. But the number one that I go to the most is for sure gonna be some type of a Domeki rig style bait. This right here is actually a freeloader with a quarter ounce ball head in it. It's like a two alt hook, fits it really, really good. But this bigger profile, the reason I'm using this this week is when you're throwing in a school of fish, a lot of times that little bit bigger profile on the, of the freeloader will get a lot more bites and then also seems to trigger those largemouth really, really good. The spotted bass seem to want to follow it a lot and the largemouth seem to want to eat it a lot, you know, and that's really what I'm looking for on the lakes that I fish around the house is I'm looking for something that the largemouth will eat and the bigger spots will eat it, but those smaller 12, 13, 14 inch spots, a lot of times they don't eat it quite as good. So sometimes they will, but those big largemouth really seem to key into that bigger profile, but it's going to be some type of a Domeki rig that's what I'm going to have. I throw it on spinning equipment, 13 fishing Axum Comp, 12 pound Sunline AMZ Orange Braid, 10 pound Sunline Shooter. I use 10 pound because a lot of times we get in these schools of fish and I'll be catching one after another, after another, after another, and I want to swing them, unhook them. I want to kind of be able to, you know, get them to the boat really, really quickly so I can drop back down the school while I've got them around the boat. So that's whenever I'm fishing for individual fish or fish that are in a school, I'm going to use a, you know, the Mickey style bait. That one is from super shallow. I mean, I throw it up there in three or four sometimes when they're really high under the water, then I'll get it all the way down to 30, 35, you know, and a lot of times if I'm going to be doing that, like if I'm going to be fishing a spotted bass lake, like I go to Lake Lanier or somewhere where I know I'm going to be fishing super deep and shallow, I'll rig one up on a 3 16 and one up on a 3 8 to get down there really deep. So that's one, that's one that you have to have. Another one is going to be a... Wait, before you move on, how do you work that one? two ways i'll pendulum it to them i'll throw it out there over them and i'll just let it slowly pendulum over their head i'll make sure i cast right in front of them get my line tight and let that bait kind of drift over their head in a pendulum if they're sitting still if they're moving very fast i throw it straight to them and let it drop straight to them on a, on a slack line and when they come up there to it i'll start to instantly reel it away from them and then also when they're sitting around cover or they're sitting in a school, I'll throw it over them and I'll just shake it over the top of them. And whenever you shake it, it actually kind of lingers in front of their face, kind of like a swim jig does. Whenever you shake it on, on top of their head, and they'll come up and, and get it then too. It seems like when you shake it, the bigger ones come and get it. But that's the three ways I do it. Straight to them, pendulum it over them, and then shake it over them. So a couple different different things. Anything else for that technique, Hunter? Awesome. Another really good one. It's going to be a soft swim bait. You know, this right here is a, I don't know which brand this one is, but it's a, you know, regular swim bait. This is either a Kitek or a Strike King, but been using the new Crush City Mayor a lot this fall. And that's got, it's got a really, really good action to, to it. It's got, it's more of a subtle and you can reel it at really slow speeds, but a swim bait, that's going to be a little bit shallower. I don't really throw it deeper than like 20 to them. But a lot of times when a lot of them are suspended up high, I like that swim bait because I can hold it over their head and go a little bit slower. Throwing the Domeki style bait, you, you reel it past them at a decent pace you know that swim bait kind of slows down and lingers over their over their head you can kind of reel it slow by them and some days they really like the tail and then some days they don't i've had days before where i couldn't hardly get them to bite a domeki and throw this and they'll, they'll instantly start eating it and i've had days before where i can't get them to bite this and i'll literally just cut the tail off and they'll bite it so i don't really know why but i throw this on a bait caster typically this is going to be a quarter ounce head for me throw it on a bait caster 12 pound sunline shooter or 10 if it's super super clear 73 medium muse rods the one i'm using right now and then a 8.3 to 1 gear ratio reel and use a fast reel for that because i'm watching my bait the whole time i don't need to slow down and go slower and get more bites i'm watching my bait the entire time another really good one is going to be a jerk bait you know rapala just came out with a jerk bait i know my buddy jacob wheeler helped design it some and it's called the maverick and it is designed with forward facing sonar in mind super stable whenever it's whenever you pause it 
does not sink, does not float, it stays in the fish's face, which is really important because a lot of times when you're jerkbait fishing, a long pause is really important whenever those fish are behind it. But also when you jerk it, that bait is super crisp and erratic. It wants to jerk away from them. It's a really good bait that was designed with forward-facing sonar in mind. You know, and that's kind of the trend things are, are going that way right now is everybody's designing baits for this new style of fishing you know because it's been out for four or five years but the baits have not quite caught up to it yet because it kind of took everything by storm so a jerk baits are really really good one 10 pound or 12 pound if the fish are shallow and really coming up for it i throw it on 12 a lot just so i can do the same thing get those fish to the boat faster unhook them swing a lot of them and then you know make another cast so i actually use a 6 8 uh 13 fishing envy it's a medium rod, it throws really good, you know, it works, ah, I can work it really good. That rod's super light, 8.3 to 1 gear ratio reel, 10 or 12 pound sunline, and then that's kind of it for the jerkbait. Obviously, you want to use a plus one if you want to get it down a little bit deeper, but a lot of times they'll come up for it. And when I throw that jerkbait there a little bit higher in the water column, I don't try to get that bait down to them anymore. I used to try to, now I don't. Now I throw other baits to them, and then... Why would you use it over the swim bait? some days it's just some days they won't they they like it like some days that will trigger them some days they follow the jerk baits and sometimes some days they really really want that and that's what they're gonna gonna key on and it also seems to catch a bigger average size fish to me so it catches really really big ones <clears throat> then you got to have something that they can follow to the bottom it's gonna be for me a drop shot that's what i use the most if I had to pick one, it'd be a quarter ounce weight because I want it to fall through them slow and then, then follow it down to the bottom. I will go up to a 3 8 if it's super deep and I want them to follow it to the bottom even faster. But it seems like those fish that are suspended, if you do too fast of a weight, whenever that bait gets three or four feet away from them, they'll just lose interest in it. But they'll follow it all the way down to the bottom if they stay tight on it. But if they just kind of have a threshold of how fast they're willing to swim to chase something. So a drop shot's a really, really good one in my opinion. Same setup as the Domeki. It's going to be... 12 pound sunline amz braid orange tied to a 10 pound sunline shooter leader i use the gamakatsu g finesse light wire worm hook for that because i want to be throwing it weedless because when you come around a piece of brush or, or a stump or anything like that that's the bait that i'm going to pitch to it it's going to be a drop shot nine times out of ten and quarter ounce weight like i said you know everybody's got their own favorite worm kind of match whatever you're fishing if you're if you're fishing around a lot of a lot of bait you know i might use something that looks like bait if i'm fishing you know just pitching it to cover i use a worm a lot more than something i've been on for a couple of years that seems when it starts to get cold they really like is a jig like a half ounce ace jig we've got a new one coming out from untamed tackle that i actually used a ton last winter flipping it to them it's got a little bit different fall rate if the ace jig wants to glide a lot and i really like that when i'm skipping docks and skipping around shallow cover but whenever i'm trying to get it to them efficiently the new jig falls a lot better so it's actually going to be a flipping jig for flipping in cover it falls straight down super efficient and i've been using that a lot for fish for these fish offshore can't show it to you quite yet there's one laying behind me though but falls straight down what don't look. don't look but there's one like right there but it falls straight down really efficiently to them and that just helps me getting the bait in front of them fast and i, I caught them last year at like 28 on a jig whenever i'd see them on a piece of cover or just sitting for whatever reason there's a time in the year where they get on that jig profile and that's what they want and i definitely found that last year and it ended up ended up catching them really good in some tournaments and has some really key fish so that's kind of my four and then one bonus one is the jig so if i'm going how do you know if they want to go up or down for it they almost always want to go up so but the smallmouth went down you used a drop shot for the smallmouth yeah i used a drop shot for the smallmouth yeah but whenever it's uh windy smallmouth they want they get tight to the bottom so the fish i'm seeing and throwing to they're tight to the bottom so that's when they eat a drop shot whenever it's sunny they get up off the bottom and then your percentage of them that follow it down to the bottom goes way down like your your bites come from up or you have to throw different baits typically so smallmouth they're an anomaly because they're so aggressive they'll follow it and eat it off the bottom but for the most part the drop shots better when they're tight to the bottom and when they're suspended high your percentage goes down but some of them will still eat it so yeah what about other species of fish do they all eat it up other species of fish are more deliberate seems like the smallmouth they run at everything but they don't eat it but yeah most species of fish want to eat it up spots want to eat up crappy want to eat up largemouth will follow stuff to the bottom more often it seems like to me 
You know, like I have spots and small mouth follow my stuff to the bottom, a bunch of them and not eat it. Large mouth, typically, if they go to the bottom on something, they're going to get it. But they'll seem to turn away from it before it gets to the bottom a lot if they're suspended. So, yeah. That's it. I think that's all. All right. That's my, if I'm going to scoping, those are the baits I'm going to have on the front deck. So, let's go scoping.